Hi everyone, welcome to today's engineering at home challenge. Today we're going to be solving the sensor challenge, but before we get started I want to say a massive thank you to Leonardo for sponsoring this video. Leonardo is one of the UK's leading aerospace companies, providing innovative technological and support solutions to a range of customers all across the world. As well as being a part of Team Tempest, creating the next generation combat air system. Leonardo's helicopters and radars provide vital search and rescue capability and their communications and intelligence systems have been used to secure major events such as the Commonwealth Games and the Winter Olympics. Leonardo are also working really hard to help the environment and that's what today's challenge is all about. So we're going to be looking at how you can use electronic sensors to help protect wildlife. You may have noticed on some busy roads there are wildlife tunnels which go underneath the roads to allow animals to cross safely and some countries are now introducing wildlife bridges for larger animals. But these tunnels and bridges face challenges with things like flooding and collapses. So we're gonna show you how you can create some sensors to help the tunnels function as best as possible. We're gonna be creating a water sensor that can detect when there's water around, a pressure sensor that can detect when it's pressed, and a vibration sensor that detects vibrations and movement. For the water sensor, you need a small dish, an LED, a nine volt battery, and some Play-Doh. First, you want to roll out the Play-Doh into wires. I'm using red for positive and white for negative. If you don't have any Play-Doh, you can go back and watch the circuit challenge where Rachel will show you how to make your own. Now, you'll either need to split your white wire or make one longer one and one shorter wire. Then, check your battery. It should have a clear mark to show the negative and positive sides. Then you can connect the wires to the battery connectors. Make sure you put the red wire on the positive and the white on the negative side. Then the other end of the wire can go into opposite sides of the small dish. Now use the LED to connect the white wires. On your LED you should see one long leg and one shorter leg. The shorter leg is negative and this needs to go closest to the negative side of the battery. To test our sensor and complete the circuit we can fill the dish with water. When the water fills up enough to connect the red and white wires, the circuit will be complete and the LED will turn on. Next, we're going to make our pressure sensor. For this, we need cardboard, tin foil, an LED, a 9 volt battery, your Play-Doh and some scissors and glue. First, you want to cut two identical rectangles out of the cardboard. Then we want to coat one side of this completely in tin foil. Then using a piece of spare cardboard, cut a thin strip to go along one of the shorter edges and then you can glue this in place. Make sure you do the exact same to both pieces of card. Then we can sandwich the pieces of card together with the tin foil in the middle and the thin strips of cardboard should stop the centres from touching. Next we can get our battery, Play-Doh wires and LED to make our circuit. Like last time we need two white wires, one short and one longer. Connect the wires up to the battery making sure to get the right connector. Then you want the end of the red wire to go on the tin foil and the white wire to go on the cardboard. Then you can connect the two white wires with the LED again, but make sure the negative leg goes near the negative connector on the battery. Then we can put the other piece of cardboard on top so the wires are in the middle. And when you press the centre of the cardboard and the tin foil touch, you complete the circuit and the LED turns on. For the vibration sensor, you need all the same materials as before, but this time you need some straw and some sellotape. Cut a small piece of cardboard and put two thin strips of tin foil on each side. Then we want to use straws to build three walls around this cardboard. On the fourth wall, 
Cut a shorter piece of straw to just fit in between the tin foil, but not going all the way to the edge. Then with our Play-Doh, make lots of small balls and put them in the centre of the cardboard. You should have just enough that they mostly fill the piece of cardboard, but enough that they can still rattle round. You may want to make taller walls than I did. Then get your battery, LED and wires again. Connect the wires up to the battery and put the other ends onto the tin foil. Again, connect up the two white wires using the LED. I put my circuit onto some cardboard just to stop it sticking to the table. You can see now when the sensor vibrates, the balls rattle around and every now and then they align perfectly to touch all the way from one side to the other, which completes the circuit and lights the LED. All three of the sensors we've made today can be used to help protect wildlife tunnels. The water sensor could detect if there's any flooding which may block the tunnel. The pressure sensor could help with counting the number of wildlife who use it. And the vibration sensor could be used to detect traffic overhead. Can you think of any other ways the sensors could be used to help protect wildlife? Have a go at making the different sensors and please share with us on Twitter so we can see your brilliant designs and ideas for how they can be used. And if you haven't already, go and have a look at our other engineering at home challenges. We have a whole range of activities looking at different areas of engineering. Thanks for watching.